Well, we're proposing a ref refractory hypertension as sort of a new phenotype of, uh, of anti-hypertensive failure. So historically resistant hypertension or difficult to treat hypertension has been defined as blood pressure is uncontrolled on three or more medicines. And uh, we've recognized a, a even more severe group of patients who really we can never control their blood pressure in, in spite of maximum uh, therapy. So that may be five, six, or even seven medications. So that's the group that we're referring to as refractory hypertension uh, or a phenotype of antihypertensive failure. It's uncommon even in our clinic, probably only 5% of patients referred to us, uh, but they are a very striking group in terms of how severe their hypertension is and, and the rate of complications in that group of patients. Well, the major risk factors for having resistant hypertension uh, or I should say the strongest risk factors are probably CKD, having CKD, and being African American. Um, but in terms of resistant hypertension, I think probably two of the most common risk factors are obesity and older age. You know, and because as a population, not just w really worldwide, you know, we're getting older and heavier. Um, and so I think that's the reason that the prevalence of resistant hypertension is likely increasing. Well, our, uh, standard approach, if you will. I mean, obviously you have to in individualize uh, per patient, but our standard approach is to, uh, our first two medications we like to use are firstly a RAS blocker, so either an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. Uh, we add to that uh, calcium channel blocker, which is in our clinic most often amlodipine because it's an effective once a day medication. As a third drug, we will add a, we use a thiazide or thiazide-like diuretic. We are mostly in our clinic using chlorothaladone uh, because it does have a long half-life and um, clearly is more effective, uh, more efficacious than, uh, than hydrochlorothiazide, even at the same dose, dose amount. Our standard fourth drug is uh, spironolactone. Uh, we may start as low as 12 and a half milligrams. Uh, going typically 25 milligrams, occasionally 50 milligrams in, in obese patients or patients we know have high aldosterone levels. After that, it gets difficult. We probably use most often as a fifth drug, a combined alpha beta blocker, uh, so a little beta law in our, in our clinic. And then lastly, we would add a uh, centrally acting agent, such as uh, trot, ideally one that's long lasting, so we use, uh, tend to use guanfacine. And then finally, as a last resort, uh, just vasodilators, uh, minoxidil or hydrolazine.